point you also will see <coughs> President Obama give his second address to the UN General Assembly. Last year, he, uh, I, I, in the link or in the invitation, you may have had a link to a, a piece that I wrote last year, a summary of it, in which I called the, the address staggeringly naive. And that's really what it was. It was sort of a, uh, this is before Pro uh, President Obama's popularity, his uh, ratings in the polls. They were still high at the time. He was still sort of in a post-election honeymoon phase. And it was very evident that he was pursuing his relationship with the United Nations as one of sort of his international apology tour. He went up to the United Nations and he said, I, I know that you're angry at America, that there's a lot of anti-American sentiment here, but that was the previous administration's fault. It's not my fault. Here are all the things that I've done to change that. I've joined the UN Human Rights Council. I've paid off our, our dues to the United Nations over the years. I am uh, perfectly willing to go forward with the Copenhagen effort to address climate change and you know, just through a litany of different things. And say, so therefore, it's not the same America. You can deal with me. You couldn't deal with the previous administration. Um, I expect to have a little bit more of that this year. Um, this, is, this is an audience that's tailor-made to President Obama. He's going to go up there and say the things that he wants to do anyways. And a lot of his agenda is uh, simpatico with uh, the agenda of a lot of UN member states, particularly European member states, but in a way that uh, sort of casts America as just one of, any, of a whole group of countries, not as anything exceptional, not as anything extraordinary, not as anything that we have special responsibilities or, or obligations or privileges because of who we are and, and what we stand for. And instead, we are just one of the group of countries that includes Chavez, uh, Venezuela, Iran, uh, North Korea, etc., as members of the standing. How has the media influenced public understanding of the United Nations? Well, the media has a, I think, a left of center focus um, in terms of its coverage of a number of international events. And the UN is a sort of a darling of the left in the United States and the Europe. And so generally the United Nations gets a, a positive or a benefit of the doubt sort of coverage in the United Nations or in, in the press in the United States and, and overseas particularly. If you go to you know, CNN International or BBC International and you take a look at their coverage of the United Nations, it's almost always a, um, a positive spin on the organization. But sometimes the media can't avoid a, uh, a problem in the body. You saw this with oil for food. You saw this with a lot of coverage of uh, peacekeeper abuses, rapes, and, uh, and lack of, of uh, protection of women and civilians in certain circumstances. And in those stories, you do get a hint a, uh, that the organization may not be as benevolent, as effective as it is generally portrayed to be. And that is. Um, I think where the media really falls down. It really needs to be much more objective and much more focused on the on parsing between what the UN claims to be doing and what the UN is actually doing on the ground. And I think this falls uh, n somewhat to bias, um, but also due to a lack of resources. The UN operates in some of the worst areas of the world, some of the most poverty-stricken areas of the world, some of the most conflict-ridden areas of the world. and the media doesn't generally have the resources necessary to send somebody and cover these situations on a daily basis with the kind of in-depth uh, attention that would reveal, I think, a lot of the weaknesses that plagued that, uh, the United Nations. What do you think the media should be telling the public about the United Nations? Well, we, there are a lot of interesting stories. One is, and for me it's particularly alarming, is that after Oil for Food, uh, the oil for food scandal which involved the Iraqi government under sanction um, having the UN you know, sell its, uh, its oil and then procuring food for it to go back to Iraq, the Iraqi government was able to profit immensely from corrupting this UN program. This led to a, a huge embarrassment for the organization uh, to reveal that it was being manipulated by the Iraqi government. But we've also seen a number of other issues with UN management and oversight and a lack of transparency and accountability. Uh, the United Nations Development Program was implicated in selling uh, uh, rest uh, restricted technology to North Korean government. It was, it was uh, linked 
to uh, helping facilitate cash transfers by that government overseas to evade sanctions. Um, we saw numerous reports in multiple countries of UN peacekeepers committing rape, uh, UN peacekeepers uh, preying upon the very populations um, that they're supposed to be protecting. Uh, in the UN system, we've seen multiple instances reported of corruption, um, mismanagement, um, mis, uh, misappropriation of funds in terms of UN uh, procurement. Um, uh, up to a quarter of UN peacekeeping procurement investigated by the, the former procurement task force was found to be uh, tainted with corruption. And so instances like this where what the media could do is report honestly and forthrightly about the oversight weaknesses in the United Nations and the need to address those. After all, U.S. taxpayers pay a quarter of the U.N. expenses for the most part. These are our tax dollars that are being misused. And so what the media should do is report these things forthrightly. And I think it would re result in Congress paying a little bit more attention uh, to the body and what needs to be done there, putting more pressure on it for the, for the body, particularly the member states, to act where they're unwilling to act historically.